I've been playing games forever, and I've been programming since I was eight, so obviously I have some kind of experience in it. And I kind of, I can understand kind of what's fun gameplay, but I didn't mean to make Minecraft a big success. To, to claim that I know the secret sauce would be kind of false. Was it a formula? No, I, I wasn't following a formula. I was trying to make a game. This was Marcus Notch Person, who skipped college, spent long stints unemployed with a sheer devotion and hard slog, prepared a pearl that made him the emperor of the video game industry, tracing a unique success of a man who crafted a gem called Minecraft, a game that was about to change the way we think about this world and its possibilities. <laughs> Welcome to the Purple Room. Today we'll be talking about a very interesting person, Marcus Person. Is that funny? Well, Marcus struggled a lot before making it big. Um, actually, he was quite a lot of most of the time unemployed before before getting into the industry professionally. So. He searched for jobs in Sweden, got his first job which was for a small web studio. The job lasted for about six months and the IT crash came in Sweden and Marcus did nothing. He was unemployed for a couple of years, he was financially weak and was hardly able to pay for his apartment rent. After some time he got a job at a tiny printing store doing web development where the salary was below average. Then it was start some hope for Marcus that after the hard days he was finally about to get a good job and good salary. He got a job at a game federation who were making middleware for digital distribution. During this time he met Roel Jansen who made the game who he made the game Worm Online with. It was an MMORPG. It, I think it's still up and you can play it. After the project was over, he left unemployed. Now comes the turning point in his career. After a long struggle, he finally got a job at Midas Player, a game company in Sweden. Well, this is, a, this is an interesting fact, but this company was afterwards named King. It was the company that made the popular game Candy Crush. There he made a couple of multitude of flash games, Marcus was completely self-taught and had no degrees that made it difficult for him to get a job. He took a one year course of C++ by the internet to kind of upgrade his grades. During his time at King, he made 20 to 30 games. He was a programmer and had a game designer and an artist. There he learned how to actually finish projects, which was very, very valuable. Here he became friends with Jacob Borsa. He then left the company in 2009 to move into Jalbum, where he worked as a programmer for two years. He founded the company Mojang AB in May 2009, along with his best friend Jacob Borsa. He began developing the video, video games under his, this brand. He started producing his first sandbox video game, Minecraft in 2009. He then shifted from full-time to part-time in Jalbum to concentrate on his creation. In 2010, he did what no one would ever do in his life. He quit his job to focus solely on his dream. Another reminder, this was still the time when indie games were just starting. The indie scene wasn't completely like set. So, Following his quit from Jalbum, he released an early version of Minecraft. Actually, the name Minecraft was not given to the game then. People got interested in this game and started following it online. Marcus gave frequent updates, adding on new features, keeping the gamers engaged. This was the, f this was the time when Ma Minecraft was booming. Marcus, seeing the statistics, made the game paid putting a small price. This turned out to be extremely profitable for him and made him enough money to expand his company. So he bought an office in the expensive city, Stockholm, hired some staff, web developers and programmers. The company achieved new milestones thereafter. They released Minecraft for various other platforms, incre increasing their profits. And so they planned a Minecraft themed event called Minecon where they officially released the game. 
And now Minecraft, the Minecraft era had begun. With countless Minecraft videos online, everybody to talking about the game, it became the biggest video game cultural phenomenon. Seeing this huge success, I think a filmmaking group also made a documentary on the game and the story of the company. Till date, Minecraft is the most successful independent game. And then the tech giant Microsoft proposed a 2.5 billion dollar deal to buy the Minecraft franchise and the company. After a few days news came that the Minecraft franchise and Mojang has been sold for 2.5 billion dollars to Microsoft. Marx finally became a billionaire. Marcus Jacob in Mojang CEO Carl Manay, Manay left the company after the Microsoft acquisition. So much happened to Marcus in the previous years. Minecraft had won numerous awards, sold over a stunning figure of 60 million copies. This record breaking game was listed under the best selling video games of all time. Marcus also got listed in the 100 most influential people by the legendary Times magazine. In December 2014, he purchased a $70 million, 23,000 square foot luxurious contemporary style bungalow in Truesdale Estates close to Beverly Hills, California, US, furnished with all ultra luxury customized facilities. Marcus is not one of the greatest indie development floppers, but is the greatest indie video game developer. This interesting story of Marcus is truly an example of rags to riches. Very inspiring story. And Minecraft is a great game. Believe it or not, Marcus accepted the fact that he was inspired by a game called Dwarf Fortress some of you might know about if you if you like just see the game it's not even close but Dwarf Fortress is a very different kind of game but still crafting elements and like recipes and stuff like that I think that's what he took borrowed from it but dwarf, talking about Draft fortress, fortress, it's like a very dense experience, if I'd say. If you'd like dive into the game, you wouldn't understand a thing because it's the no graphics. There's just Askai characters there. Were. Right, so uh, that's the power of indie. You do whatever you like. You're not afraid of any giant organizations, you're afraid of publishers just want to do what you want to do and do the best you can Minecraft a gr great game um, recently I think we have yeah we have Cuphead everyone's talking about it we have to talk about it too Cuphead is a great game homage to the era of television animation right it was a beautiful time and we've like Everyone's covering about c covering Cuphead at this now, and we're like, it's a fair game. It's not hard. I mean, it's hard, but it's not like cheating you in any way. It's it's, f it's a kind of a satisfactory feeling that you got from playing like um, Meat Boy, Super Meat Boy, right? It's an indie game too. Like actually, we think like indies save. They are saving the video game industry instead of like AAA producers. Breakthrough. Ah, we're running out of time. We have to wrap up. Alright. Thank you for listening. I hope you liked the story of Marcus Person and the company he built and the game he built. And thank you for listening once again.